damn it. Hold on. Hey, Kelly. Take them out. Let me test it. The fuck? Okay, so take them out and you have to do the test thing on the left corner. Like, do you see where it says mute and there's a little arrow next to the mute thing? And it will say like, select a microphone, select a speaker and test. I tried and it, it doesn't, wait. Let's see. Head. Is it okay? You think? Yeah. <laughs> You're <it>. muted now. <laughs> Okay. Jennifer, I'll make sure to keep an eye on that and I'll let you know if anything like good comes across, okay? Okay. Yeah. No. <laughs> Wait. Purposes, so I'm sorry. Swear to God. I have two minutes. I think they can hear us already. Stop it. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. Down in Jacksonville, Florida, keel up quickly, and we're bummed that you're not starting tonight. Yeah, multiple. The one I was talking about with Laura Jorgensen crashing was that was with one lap to go when she went down. Um, the one I was talking about, Christina Koki Smith and Olivia Ray, that was in that final 300 meters. And the one you're talking about was uh, a few laps. There we go. Okay. Can y'all hear it? Because I can't. Okay. That's how the fly light. Nineteen eighty. We create uh, an event that a world-class sporting event that nobody's going to have to pay a penny to come see. Hi, Gene. Wow, 40 years. It's an amazing oh, yeah, I remember that. Oh, yeah. It's an amazing part of American cycling, and we thank you for that. Gene, I wanted to say... I can't hear anything. Are we supposed to hear the like, YouTube thing? This is a special year. It's a four years anniversary of Athens Twilight. Jean, thank yeah, you very much for muted. putting this amazing event together. One of the uh, okay, good. most memorable places I've ever raced my bike down in Athens, Georgia. The atmosphere is absolutely crazy. The uh, speed oh, okay. is always high and every racer there is looking to win. Congratulations, Gene, on 40 years. One night every year, cycling goes into the mainstream in this country, and that's all because of you. Thanks for 40 okay. years, Twilight Gene. To me, Athens Twilight Criterium is the epitome of American cycling, American Criteriums. There's no other race in the world that I've done a victory lap high five in the crowd the whole way around. Athens Twilight, 40 years, congratulations. What an awesome event. Best fans, Best course, best crowd, best city, best atmosphere, best overall vibe, and establishment in bicycle racing. Thank you, Gene. Wait, so are you going to talk with us like, about the race? Gene Dixon, or just... 40 years of Twilight. 
Wow. Why not 40 more? Happy birthday, oh, Gene. Okay. David Crow here. Congratulations oh, okay. on the Twilight. I saw the first one. I've been riding ever since. Thanks, Gene, for 40 years of Twilight, and I'm excited for the next 40. Hi, Gene. Congratulations on 40 fabulous years of Twilight. And Gene, thank you very much for 40 years of a spectacular Athens Twilight Criterium. Thank you, Gene, for 40 years of Twilight, and hopefully okay. there will be many more Twilights. We're just thankful all the racers that have done uh, Athens in the past and the ones that will do it in the future. We okay. thank Gene Sounds for all good. his thank work. You. I've been trying to win Athens Twilight mm -hmm. since, I don't know, 98. So it took a lot of tries, probably a dozen or so. So yeah, thanks Gene for 40 years of Twilight. My title for Twilight 2001 okay. is event so, co-director. So will the Comet Twilight, Twilight through the Zoom group chat or, or like how does, that, how does that come through? A visionary. On YouTube. Ever giving you enough credit. Do you always knew there's a different way to do things and often a better way to do them and you would just do it. I remember my first time moving okay. to Athens and going to UGA and walking into Dixon's bike shop and meeting oh, you know, okay. with your I hair flying it. all over the place and running around and um, I can't believe that it's been 40 years that you just created this epic, amazing race. Thanks for everything, Gene. You're awesome. I've won your race and I'm very proud to have won that because I think it's one of the greatest races in America. I just remember there being like a thousand so crashes during this so race. Under those lights. Yeah, uh, me too. And I remember Eric Eric coming in. Gene Dixon, I want to thank you very much and, and I will congratulate you <laughs> on 40 years of running this race. Yeah. What an unbelievable achievement. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I know, hold on, Ravi, don't go anywhere. Scott, stay right there. Yeah, Ashley. her chain came off. Ladies and gentlemen, Gene Dixon, <laughs> I must say, he was the one that discovered me as a race commentator, and I'm so blessed, yeah, and thank you for that. that was bad. More importantly, Gene, you've got Ravi Radzkumar to your left, who's been with you for 30 years. Ashley and I have been with you for 15, and these fans have been with you for 40. On behalf okay. of everybody, I saw a tear, and I want to give you a hug and say thank you. This is for everybody. All right, now, Gene, as you normally say to everybody else, get the hell off our race course. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank well, you, ladies, thank very you. much for your patience right there. Hey, Chief, why don't we get some pumping going on right now? My family might be watching. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Oh, free. I remember this. I had to start to the front because they wouldn't let me nine start laps. the front. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? I did. I kept getting in trouble, too. <laughs> Racers ready. Here, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Let's go. I would have been the first one yelling at you. <laughs> Prem on the first lap. Prem on the first lap. Rob, back to yeah, you. Yeah, then I had to go all the way to the bottom, and I found a little all spot right, through, the, after that, <laughs> through the pits. <laughs> exceptionally emotional mo moment. I can't even talk now. We are off in racing with a $200 first lap preem from Athens. We've usually seen like collecting goo and SIS, like empty things and Well, the women are underway right now. Is this going to be that's lap my job. number one that's on the back stretch? We talked like, about it yeah. being like the tailwind. They had a parade, like you know what? a parade lap like right before the race started. So there was like race. stuff all over the road, all the, the amount candy. of fans that come out and line the side of the road you remember continues that? to grow. Yeah. And it's a, a special tribute. Oh, yeah. And, you know, a, a jersey is just a, a small token of the appreciation that I think many of us have. How did y'all get on the front? What this race means to so many cyclists. You Eric are like right up there. Absolutely right. And you as a crits as a whole has come together and just grown and grown more and more every year and they've looked at ways to benefit the sponsors more benefit the racers more and in really encouraging the team dynamic with the prize payout and then also uh supporting the teams that come in summer kelly my texas girls from miss dakota it stands Hi. alone 
in nighttime criteria oh. racing. Not a lot of races <laughs> yeah, can even Texas. hold a finger to it. And swallow. that's what makes Twilight so special. And that's why <laughs> riders actually Wait, so like, know, are we skip to races like, leading like, up to this race in order race? to get ready specifically for the Athens <laughs> Twilight. So that's turn number oh, one. Okay. Yeah. The hay bales. Very <laughs> okay. quick. Really, there's one line. Oh, if anyone has any questions, they can like drop some you're questions end up in the chat bar. You're going to end up into the hay bales. Right now, Erica Carney. And summer moke yes. in the front. And just wait She's for it. This race is right so much fun. Like I third. remember all the crashes and all Fourth, the blood. Excuse it was me, great. The USA Crit Series. Yeah, now, Erica told me before the start, no matter what, I had to figure out a way to get to the front. <laughs> so I snuck you to the front. that it made the winner of Athens, which somehow. is to be able to take. There's taking over the USA Crit Series, which is a possibility because Lily Williams and Leanne Ganser are not here from Hawkins Bremer Superman. And there's also Speed Week points. Exactly. Now I'm one of one team, so I don't have to fight for it. Leading into the rest of the week. And, of course, the winner right now in Speed Week is Sam Schneider. Oh, it's Lee. Because of that fantastic sprint that Love he did yesterday Lee. in Spartanburg. Lee, Lee, Lee. Lee. DNA. Yeah, you That's know, so and it's funny. It's really challenging for the to keep track of all the points, sprints, and the mid-race points, preem, and cash yes, preems. I've known and forever. And one of the things that one USA Chris has done differently this Love year him. is they actually have a yeah. blinking light up on the stage that lets the racers know, okay, uh, we're sprinting on this lap, but what are we sprinting for? And the different no, I don't think Kip was in on this one. And I think this was right before Kip started joining. Or points on the series or points. She had just flown in New Zealand. Oh, wow. The DJ is rocking Let's the music see, on the like stage. The first crash, the like a few minutes in. Entertainment. Look at the fans. They're, it's, it's five, six deep all the way around. And right now, these riders still... How, how long how long does the cat and mouse game uh, kind of take place? You know, trying to see which teams are willing to be able to kind of force the pace, which teams might attack, who's sitting in for the sprint. Is this something that maybe, you know, takes two laps or does it go into oh, 10 to 20 laps? Well, I think right it now like happened right really after the start finish. Each other out hey, finding, Abby. Uh, each other's Abby. teammates, you can see Rally is... Look, They've found their team. We've well, got, that's easy enough when you only have two, correct? That's true. Uh, Hoggins Berman presented by Superman, also with two teammates, Julie Kaliza and Starla Tettergreen. They found each other up at the front. Uh, Cola Vita presented by BLM. I'm actually really looking forward to this right race in October. So right now the race yeah, this are is more such an exciting race and gearing up it's for so that much fun. Sprint, like the whole crowd, it's five laps. I, I think that the crowd is actually better than Tulsa. That's right, that's and a couple like I know that's controversial to say, right but in the middle there from the I, I don't know. I think they get like, more uh, into it than Tulsa. I think, I think Tulsa is more about the beer and the party. Racing team on the right hand and Athens is more about the race. They hadn't shown yeah, up. Yeah, but Athens before. is just like the a big college challenge. So there's a lot of young people out, like having a good time. Right now, they're setting up to turn number one in a big crash, wow. right at the start finish line. I mean, right, this is right behind us. We yeah. can't see it right During now. During the podium ceremony, I met like uh, some it's of right the guys. The oh, there's the first crash. What I hate to see is, of course, those ladies oh. on the ground <sighs> grabbing at their collarbone. That's just oh, such a that's shame. that's so bad. So just trying to kind of assess the situation. We see different riders from a lot of different teams uh, that have gone down. Now, of course, free laps, uh, they're still able to get out there and take Yeah, a lot of people, like, make sure their bike's they okay. And, like, oh, here we go. We have a replay oh. right in the middle. It's just an overlap of the wheel, and riders just tumbling. And you yeah. can see Laura Van right. Gilder in the background looking not too happy about that. You can tell, though, that the women behind the crash did have their eyes up and and kept themselves oh from crashing. I feel bad. After the like, back of the crash, like we did see in some After of the that crash races. happened, I was like, do not go backwards on the course. The straightaway. It's like one of the oh, riders shit. on our team, <laughs> yeah. Mobile, looking like maybe might be her shoulder. The rest of the riders still oh, standing, you know, standing in the road. I'm not sure why they don't clear off the road, kind of get to one side. Well, also, uh, Amanda, one of my girls, she, right she broke her elbow. She's like, riders, put me back in, in, put me back in. I was like, no, like... Be able so to broken. you know fix their bikes, get things going, oh and then God. return to the race. But it happened right in the yeah. middle, and I think just kind of riders trying to move up, and it's not going that fast. And that's when it's bunched up, where things get really tricky. But look at the uh, great goal mobile. She just oh, went yeah. totally endo, oh, that was to land right on her back. That was Brianna Clark from Gray Goat Bullseye uh, out of Carmel, Indiana. She's actually a lawyer, so hopefully <laughs> she's uh, not too hurt. And then you can see Cynthia Laner from Unknown Brewery going down. And then I did see Cynthia get up and shake her head, uh, trying to shake it off. So 
We also have rider number two. Yeah, I always hate it. <laughs> like, that's my least favorite part is when it bunches up and I'm like right in the middle. United I'm like, okay, I need to figure out, out a way to get out of right here. Right now, taking care of uh, Brianna Clark. As you had mentioned, that was the first yeah. rider <laughs> to go over the handlebar. I might. And kind of I was like, Brianna, I was like what do I do? I'm um, the mom. You know, <laughs> Brianna's been racing for a while. Yeah. And she's, you know, she's sitting there. You can tell she's very calm. And I think she knows exactly. Oh, yeah, because like, they move around yeah. for a while. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, you wait, know, you just got to stand around it, somewhere and yeah. really clear you and let you get off the oh. course. 45 laps of racing. We're three laps in, so we're stuck right now at the 40. When I was telling my friends to watch this race, I was like, there are so many crashes. Goat. It's super exciting. <laughs> Mobile, is it being oh, my to gosh. It's the grain because they're, they're trying to get back to where the look service pit is. Yeah. Jose Alcala doing a fantastic job. He hasn't been too busy earlier, but okay. now he's going to be quite good. busy as yeah. we have a lot of riders going into the pit. I will say, Frankie, how does the break really like this affect you once the start the kicks start off again? Oh, that's a good question. Together to restart I mean, honestly, and like on group rides or is like, on the I mean, definitely like isn't great for the legs because like the first 10 minutes of like crits are so incredibly hard. So usually that's whenever like a lot of people get dropped or making, you know, if you're at the front like it's you're trying like, to make it hard just so it kind of splits up a bit and like and race you know race it's in a straight line so there's not many crashes but definitely paper. like your legs kind of fill up with plastic acid those first like 10 minutes and you kind of settle in so this was kind of an interesting race because you know you race really hard from the start especially it's a big race you see a lot of pressure and then you know 10 minutes in a crash like this happens and you like sit up and it's all back together and it kind of redoes it but like honestly i mean you get used to like riding outside on the road and stopping for me it's not big but issue but like some people time, like you know, have their like it's a bike race. warm up it's it kind of messes up the way you the front. We can see, you know how you feel uh, and then soda after right the race starts Vita, again because your legs are kind of Tina already Pink shot from like the pressure right that was set side. at the beginning Pretty so i mean to be able to win this it's kind of different for everyone times. but it's definitely challenging to you know go full gas from the start and like try to hold position and like try to move up and then kind of have to restart that all over again 14 winning in 2004 how how did you get into racing? Because I remember and racing with you. Road, I remember 14, you were like 12, four. maybe. <laughs> and I was like, you keep going, girl. I was like, you go. And you were like kicking ass when you were 12. So how, how did you get into it? Was it your mom or your dad or both? That's amazing in I mean, both of my parents. I mean, my mom was a runner and my, my, me and my mom were runners. But like, at the time, there was like a velodrome like but spring I guess track camp and, keep it calm and so my mom like wanted me to go there because she was friends with Madeline McDuff which is a girl who lived down, locally and she was friends with my brother and she was like oh yeah well, you know you should get your daughter into this like cycling track camp and so my mom took me there for like the first time and basically I like loved it ever since and then um the only reason we went to nationals that year is because they were in Frisco Texas the village room here and so my parents probably wouldn't have taken me to nationals otherwise but since it was, it was in the state. I went and I ended up like winning every event and had like the fastest 500 like through the 1718. So ever since then, like just kind of sticking to it and progressing each year. So yeah, I started on the velodrome and slowly moved into the road. And that they're taken care of and that's exactly what's taking Yeah, I remember actually talking to your mom and I was like, she's going to be the next uh Yesterday we were delayed. Yeah, and my mom. was a little bit dangerous for the riders to My mom and I were so competitive at the beginning. Like we were like we were. <laughs> couple crashes and some like we would race the crits together the and like on the track of, uh, and i would try to beat her time and she would try to beat mine so it was really fun kind of like growing up being competitive with your mom and, and now we still train together right now with but uh she to yeah she you know we try and sprint together on the on pch and stuff so it's pretty fun because we've you know through it's been a family adventure for sure so we talked about so the thing to say about Summer, you know, because she'll so never say right about herself, is that, like, she's super humble and, sprint, you know, just, uh, Sam Schneider. Second you know, place, watching her grow coming, through you know, her, it, like, her whole progression yeah, of, you know, starting as, like, a junior and, like, growing through, you know, racing with Rally and things like that, she has always been incredibly humble and gracious, um, which is one of the things that always drew me to her and her family is that, you know, she's there to have fun and just to race her bike. She's not there to, like, prove anything to anybody, um, and that's something that I just, I, I really appreciated about her. Uh, the for years. Jerseys, because something you're going to have to so. be able to keep an eye well, out. Well, thank you, Kelly. <laughs> That's nice of you.
Yeah, it's been really interesting. Yeah, I definitely to like to have fun and the, uh, try and prove having fun through to, racing hard. So, uh, going yeah. ahead and giving Moak uh, a, a proper lead out. That's really, really cool. Uh, sometimes the best the crash lasted forever. Amazing lead outs yeah, <laughs> it lasted a long time. <laughs> That's really cool it was the longest crash like ever. <laughs> Shannon, your mom is like, now she kicks my butt. Lol. So we're gonna take this <laughs> neutralized right now. We're gonna go to. Are you sure your mom could still kick mine? So. For the Athens Twilight That's not true. We'll my mom is always. We ride Zwift together, and I always see her in there. And she's just cranking out the watt. Her tongue's hanging on the ground. I just try and <laughs> try and motivate her to go harder. <laughs> Like your mom is amazing. I love, yeah. I love your mom so much. Yeah, she's Subaru awesome. Ascent, presenting the all new three row Subaru Ascent. Love is now bigger than ever. So when a crash like this happens, it's basically like the race has to just start over again. Like there's, especially when it happens within the first, like what was that, the third lap? Um, you're you're basically starting from scratch, right? Yeah. And Subaru is the most trusted brand. You're fighting for position again, and then it's really hard again from the start, especially after a crash like that. Then it kind of wakes everybody up because you don't want to be in the back because you like notice how the crashes happen in the back. Um, so yeah. really, you like everyone's like on edge now, like oh, I have to get to the front, so it makes it extremely hard from the start again. Yeah, that was one thing that I was told was now, nothing good uh, happens right in the now, back. The that was one of the uh, best pieces of advice I ever right now, got. It was like, don't ever be on right the back. Be near uh, the front, but not on the front. So, I mean, just a piece of advice if you're getting into racing. You don't need to be on the front because, you know, nobody is not the strongest person who wins. It's the smartest person. And you'll see this like with watching Summer in this race. Like, she's super smart with like what wheel she follows and everything like that. So it's it's the smartest person that wins, not the strongest. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Come through the middle. Definitely you always, especially in a crit, like with this kind of money on the line and a lot of girls like wanting to get good results here it's like you have to ride in a good position and honestly like i i follow like every move that goes just because you never know what's going to end up the road but just following a move is way easier than having to bring a move back so that's one thing for myself that i always remember in a race and i always do probably way too much work than i need to but i would definitely want to be in a move than have to bring it back yeah <laughs> It's just how I like to race. It's today pretty is, interesting. Uh, I know I, I sometimes do. Love I, it. Race number two yeah, I just do too much, series. but it's, it's fun. <laughs> so, I mean, one of those things that I always tell my girls is like, you never know what can happen. Like, I will never get mad if you try something and it doesn't work out. Because at least you tried something. The most boring thing about racing is if, like, you know, the same person wins week after week after week and you know like nothing exciting happens like shake it up it might not work it might who knows but at least you tried something and you made it interesting for the spectators to watch yeah exactly i totally agree i like whenever moves happen it makes it interesting yeah it's definitely a lot of fun Caro, oh she just attacked she got away nice shot of debbie milne Right there with the Supra Master. Love Caro. Oh my National God, champion. she's amazing. <laughs> as, uh, Debbie Milne is somewhere. In the oh, we're back to racing. Where she was. As oh, okay. Well, finally, it's, <laughs> long, it's like 27 <laughs> minute break. On the front right oh, now I'm back on the front. <laughs> the front. The criterium is underway once again for the pro women. A large field here too. Let's see if we start off at 201. We Finally, pay attention to me. Are you gonna type your oh. questions? <laughs> Walk us through your pre pre race meeting with Erica. I think we're going to so okay. go down here. in this race, which is a large field. So the night before, um, if you guys remember, was Spartanburg, the, and we went second and third. And I had travel so legs, so typically on, on like the first the night of like a week long crit series, I usually don't have great legs because I try to save them for the next few days. So they're usually not great the first day, and so at Spartanburg, I knew I didn't have super great legs. 
Kings. And also we were coming off of Sunny King. So we had like pretty high expectations for, you know, placing and how we wanted to do. Um, so basically Spartanburg. Sorry? Riders How did you do it, Sunny King, real quick? Here's the front row. Look at some oh. folks just kind of looking over, um, seeing who's uh, kind of I won Sunny King. The <laughs> There's actually some the funny stories about Sunny King as well, because it was like my first time grid, racing with Erica. Five. And we went and bought radios five, that morning so we could like so talk to each to other in the race. That. The and like the cords are, that we bought didn't work. <laughs> so like yelling, two of the up, Piedmont kids up. went and changed out the um, headphones that we so had. And so on the line, we like put the radios on really quick and mine was not working. And so Erica kept talking to me and Jamie kept talking to me like during the entire race at Sunny King. And I was like doing, I was working a lot of Sunny King and like knew that Jamie's very smart. And so he helped me with all of my tactics. And he told me that Sunny King was going to be one in the breakaway and that like I do want to mention we, me or Erica, every race we went into, we were working for me it. or Erica. I, and um, ago, he told me shoulder, basically it, like it this exhausting. race will be one in the breakaway the and you have to be in the final breakaway. Injured, uh, so that was really before the race. And so the whole you, time he's like chatting to me in the radio and he's chatting and like going on and on. Well, after the race, he was like, Erica comes up to me and she She's like, oh my gosh, you followed you every direction Jamie gave you perfectly. Family. Like he told me to Talking be to third out of the last corner and just sprint as far as I could. And so I ended up winning that race. And then we got back to the car and he was like so excited. And I had to tell them that my radio didn't even work. So, but it was fine. Cause I just, I raced off of instinct and that's like what I do at that. And also like having a little bit of guidance and just beforehand, Jamie's so smart. So I knew exactly like everything that I needed to do. Uh, but um to yeah so go going away, into Athens uh there, we were pretty we were like pretty bummed right about now. second and third Nobody's I mean it, it was great but we definitely we wanted more we like to win <laughs> we're greedy we saw that name <laughs> um so uh basically Athens was we knew it was gonna be um, just a sprint finish because the win that day was but just with the wind it wasn't gonna be a breakaway we didn't expect it to be a breakaway but um he definitely always tells me to just follow the moves if they're in front of me it's way easier kind of for ener to your energy and just to follow the moves especially the with there only being two of us the, we don't want to be on the back foot because like we aren't going to bring it back like once the move's gone if there is a move we're kind of out of it um and then erica after sunny king and spartanburg um she was going to lead me out because she is really good with positioning and then if i just stay on her wheel she'll bring me exactly to where i need to be and just with my sprint i sprint long like I can go faster and faster as the sprint gets longer. So basically our goal for that night was to stay together as much so as we could throughout the whole race and just kind of practice the last free. corner, um, me following her wheel. So we had radios in this race. So her and I were able to talk to each other and Jamie was in our ago, ears. He told us what to do the entire time. And um, he's very well, smart. So definitely just listen to what he has to say. And then and in the end, basically, I think three laps to go, we pair up and stay together and make sure no one tries to take my wheel. But yeah, we did go pretty early, but I just agree. Yes, Jamie is Erica's husband, time, and he runs um, the Piedmont National Cycling Champion Program at Piedmont College. Uh, so he has a group of team. collegiate cyclists that he brings around, and they go to races. And so and when I went to Speed Week, for, uh, I stayed tier, with Erica and her husband, Last Jamie, and it. also so a bunch a of expect, the collegiate riders. We all traveled to all the Speed Week races together. So yeah, it's an awesome program they have going. Last year on the front, it's the Wolfpack. Caroline yeah. DeFore looks like out of the front taking off right now. Yeah. Sitting in. And that's kind of interesting to see. You know, as much as much as you pay attention, Christy, to what teams are attacking, it's also very interesting to see what teams are sitting in and doing nothing. Also, I have right, a, a funny tip about Athens. So this was my uh, first time to ever do the pro race at Athens from 2019. But I went to Speed Week as, oh my gosh, I think 2014 maybe. I was a cap three and I did the three fours and I won the Athens three fours. So those are the two times that I've raced it. But my and my mom traveled there from Texas. We drove to Athens like or Speed Week at the time. And my mom 
I won the Cat 3 4s of Athens and my mom won the Cat 3 4s the next day of Roswell. And so, for like all of these years, me and my mom have always like, me and my dad give my mom a hard time. We're like, oh girl, you're the queen of Athens. Because like, she won Roswell. I don't know what it was about, but we just had this joke like, oh girl, you won Athens. And um, so it's been sticking ever since. So when I won Athens, it was pretty funny because then I actually won Athens. So, first and second yeah, right so now, just some, some like some family fun about Athens. So pretty funny, but come. yeah. <laughs> well in this race, maybe Emily Flint, Starla Telegram. What's your favorite part Soto. about Athens? Those are all like, be what do you like about that race? Two hundred for the winner, but these ten points right now. Um, I honestly very like it's so fun all around. Like I think, I mean, I've had I've had wins that definitely took a little bit more work and like. Winning the GC at BOS this year was like super With exciting, Lerza, but there was something about Athens. It was like definitely like point, just the ecstatic crowds and afterwards, and just being able to do the victory lap and like having people like so give you beers that, and like high fives. It's Starla like Tettergreen it's like a big party. Like you feel like a celebrity for a lap, points, <laughs> and, front, and like just like afterwards Emily walking Flynn. around like. Everybody wants so right to ask now, you about racing. And it's pretty exciting just to see, like, here, so right? many Lily people Williams interested in what you're are, doing are and here. just watching the race and, like, just seeing how, like, excited they are to be there. It's actually, it's just, like, a lot of fun. I can't really explain it. It's just the crowds and everything makes it, like, so exciting. I remember, like, before the start, I was so nervous because they were just, like, people everywhere and just, like, having a good time. And there's, like, a lot of pressure. And it's just such an adrenaline rush. It's really exciting. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I, I mean, that's like I try to explain what awesome. crit racing is to, to people who have never seen it. Um, and I just say it's like NASCAR on bikes, but I don't think that does it justice. Like, how how would you explain crit racing to people who have never done it or it's seen it before? It's really exciting. It's really hard. It and it's just so like... You know, who's I don't know. It's just like a big party. I don't. There's something about crit racing that's like, just like super there. exciting, and it's just like crazy. you honestly feel like you're partying the whole time that you're racing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so good questions. Um, so who was your biggest threat at Athens? Who were you most? Who were you targeting? Um. Honestly, after Spartanburg, DNA like Sham right Schneider now, is probably one of the biggest competitors. It. Like Don't she has a really good sprint right on her. Right yeah, and so I knew six. that, you know, she'd be one to watch. But after um, racing her a few times, we kind of, you know, used the same tactic a lot of the time because it was working. But yeah, definitely Sam Schneider was one to watch. Oh, another crash, uh, man. Riders yeah, going always. down. Um, was there a particular team you were looking at? Like, I know Sam, Sam Schneider, uh, one of the rally riders, regardless of what uh, team she's on, she's, she's going to, you know, crush. But was there another team like Colavita or uh, DNA or somebody like that, or Wolfpack, that you were looking at? You were like, oh, you know, they have a really solid roster. Like, we need to, to pay attention to what whatever moves they're doing. Like, anything like that? Yeah, basically, like, every team that was there i mean we didn't really have a, a target just team but like the back as Carney, we were just right kind of targeting the the every rider um yeah. you know we don't not necessarily sure have a we just kind of focus right on now. being on the front foot of things um not letting any moves go because typically if a move goes that represents every team well, represents dna Wolfpack. Um, oh, it's Erica. Herself, LA Sweat. Like, if every team's representing and we don't have anyone up there, it's like, mm, well, obviously, we need to be there. So, it's honestly just marking marking well, moves. Uh, I would say, like, yeah, there. sometimes we do we target certain teams if they have, yeah, you know, more riders than other teams. But with something like Athens, there's equal riders from each team besides us with two. So, we every right. move, if it went, and if it was like a big group, we definitely. Madeline you know, Marbury. didn't want to miss what the move, but yeah, save. just kind of, we usually just targeted wow. every move. Ten points for that. <laughs> so another great question from Carl, um, he said, I don't know if you covered this already, but there was controversy about the new uh, course direction last year because of the crash. And what do you think? Was it blown out of proportion? Right. Cause I mean, um, I mean, I honestly, I didn't race Carl it the other way, so I don't know, last year but right. I couldn't imagine sprinting up 
the uh, back side. Oh, there's, there's another crash. To take part of the season off, but it came yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I would say blown out of proportion because there are so many crashes anyway. Maybe the bumps just kind of caught her in the Yeah, I mean, like, I, I know both directions there were took her crashes. I know the year that I went, I watched it from, like, corner one that year, and, like, all of Hank Happy crashed the first corner. Yeah. But, like, I couldn't imagine sprinting up the final straight, the straightaway that was the back straight right because it was so bumpy. Them. But, um, With the blue yeah, I mean, if the, if the road were repaved, I think either way, it's, it would be the best option. But, um, I mean, for me, a course is a course, and, like, you just, yeah. Like, again, USA Crits points out, like, both of the main crashes happened right in the straightaway. There were no corners, nothing. Like, they, I don't know what happened. Um, Oh, that's one where Erica goes down. Oh, yeah. I don't know how she got back up after that because I remember seeing her in the pit and I was like, are you okay? She's like, I'm fine. <laughs> she had like blood yeah. like, going down her leg. She's like, I'm fine. I'm like, okay. Yeah, so she actually ended up getting a concussion, like a mild concussion. She cracked her helmet, but she got a new helmet and restarted. Um, so that night I was on the podium and like, you know, you get a beer and <laughs> so I drink my beer and then, you know, we go to go home and she's like, well, I don't know if I can drive. And I was like, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> so we stopped off at McDonald's, at smashed a Big Mac, and then I drove home. But <laughs> yeah, it was, you know, after that race, I think you, with the adrenaline, like after a crash, especially, you just like want to get out there and like race hard. But I know definitely she she took a hit for the next couple of days. She was like super yeah, sore. Sure. And, yeah, it's a good thing uh, they yeah. bring uh, the look question bicycles. Also, do you have bike insurance and who do you recommend if you do? Not only with wheels, but also, you know, some of the bigger teams. Maybe you can explain mm -hmm. that. You know, okay. if, you're, uh, if you're on your own, my parents <laughs> handle. Uh, bike I live with my parents, so uh, I honestly I don't know. I can't answer that. I know we, we've had bike insurance, but I. The team kind of takes care of that for you, pretty much. Like, you're, you're, the racers are given bikes to race, and, um, a lot of times we carry insurance to, you know, make sure that our, our riders have, have bikes regardless of whether they go down or not. I mean, that's just going to happen. Frames are going to crack. And a lot of times um, the good companies will have crash replacement policies as well. So um, that's that's a good question. Um, that's something I should have an answer for. But I don't know how I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know, like, I guess the owner's insurance or renter's insurance, oh, yeah. like, covers if your the, uh, house was broken the, into or whatever. The toe but, overlap with the front uh, we try and keep our bikes inside. Bike uh, definitely the more expensive ones we keep inside. So all of your bikes, Summer, you keep inside. That's just one of many stories, isn't it? Oh, yeah, they're everywhere. I mean, most of them, yeah. Yeah, they are cobbled together bikes. I mean, a lot of the racers didn't get yeah. evidence till three, four in the morning. Oh, that, yeah, there, there I am with my husband. So my husband actually is um, my co-partner for Wolfpack Racing. His name's Dustin, and he's like the best mechanic ever. Um, and he and I are in the pit. We were super busy this race. <laughs> oh yeah, I can only imagine. He was, he's so good at like pushing people in. I'm terrified. Kelly Samuelson with LA Sweat has tried to teach me really and I'm just, up. I'm scared I'm going to push someone yeah, over. Um, yeah, Summer, what is the worst crash Saturday you've ever been in? This is from Georgia. Leg Day Cycling. Right here near the um, University of Georgia. Okay, it's so I had this, okay, so I crashed, well, I crashed at Walterboro a couple of days after this, but I actually rolled a tire in a corner, which is not great. But when I was in Europe this summer, the tires we were running were you know, kind of a little slippery oh, and yeah, so we went in to it was probably like three miles into the stage and it was raining that, and this so there was we had three roundabouts at the start of the race and, and i remember and going through the first roundabout being like oh my god it felt like my tires were sliding and then we hit the next roundabout and me and three of my teammates all on the side of the course like the 
be the field doing splits in the middle like this, and there. all four of us just woo. Well, be glad to be able to get back <laughs> so we all get back Rebecca up and we're Washington taking back on, and, uh, kind of in like we're separated at this point. Australian Some of us get back on quicker than others. We're going champion. through the next roundabout again. <laughs> just two of us slide she out again. Nice. And, um, yeah, just too much Mullins, tire pressure in the rain and the roads in Europe are pretty slick. And yeah. So that's probably one of the worst crashes. The I, I actually crashed second. on the same hip she had won twice, the day and, and so afterwards, now I have a nice scar on the side of my the leg. But like yeah, definitely, it took me a while to get over that one, just name. bike so handling, feeling, you know, going through two different roundabouts in your bike, you know, sliding out from underneath you. Well, yeah, that's one of the things. When you feel like you can't press your equipment, it messes with your head as a racer. Yeah, for sure. It took a while to get over it. And still, like, again, um, when I was in Europe a couple times, it was a rainy day. Just I knew that Especially I was going to have a hard time. And it actually took me out of Tour uh, Norway because really I was so – I had an anxiety attack Europe, about it because I felt like I couldn't corner. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, kind of um, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of important. Now, what I'm wondering <laughs> but, yeah, it's so, sometimes. <laughs> Frankie has joined us. Hey, Frankie. Um, there's Kelly Samuelson actually giving one of my riders a push in because I can't do it. There was actually, you know, so the, the Athens is scheduled for September 19th, which is actually my 40th birthday. I will say my 29th for the 11th time, but it's legit my 40th birthday. So I would love for Wolfpack to win for my 40th birthday, just, you know, because, um, but that's that. Um, and you do not race collegiately, correct? I do not race collegiately, but hey, I will win. <laughs> that was a question from Frankie. Um, and he also wanted to know um, who contacted you for you to join she Wolfpack. Like she was getting chased down by Erica Carney. I'm so when I was in uh, Europe, I was, pavement, you know, back going back through a time and, uh, um, really being that was really challenging and just race. kind of figuring out what I wanted to do um, for racing and just to have fun and find the joy and you know well, what I was doing and when her, I've but... always followed Wolfpack I've known Kelly forever since I raced it and since I raced in Texas so in like really 2012 13 uh, 14 I'm and sure um it was just I wanted to have fun so and so having a team stripes, like Wolfpack you always see having fun and um I contacted contacted Kelly while I was in Europe and I was like hey like here's what I want to do um, you know how do you feel about this and you know together uh, she worked with me and, and worked with what I wanted and it's also, really I raced with Lux as well, and Kelly's really helped me work out something that really meant a lot to me this year, really and hard. sadly, we aren't but racing right now, but I wanted to just race and have fun and, you know, not feel the pressure left that left I had been feeling, and just, I wanted to plan out my, so, uh, my racing schedule uh, in January and have a set plan, like, that's what I was going to do through the whole year, and Kelly worked with me and just created something that was super special and sad, sadly right we aren't racing now but yeah i'm really i was looking forward to racing and having fun and yeah so yeah <laughs> i love the fact that your mom said i'm so young <laughs> the three of those riders she's now my favorite um a very good question from nick wilson uh what is your favorite usa crits course and they need to catch that they want to race i haven't done all of them but so our the timing is off I've right done, there. I would say that I, I really liked Athens. Like, well, I don't know why people don't like it, but I mean, I definitely Zealander liked it. The course was the challenging, and um, with the hill, it always makes it kind of exciting. A small hill. And I also really like Tulsa. Every day at Tulsa is really fun. The only one that I would say at Tulsa that's not my favorite is Blue Dome District. But <laughs> yeah, for some reason, really I had a hard that one. Well, like, I have a hard time holding position in that one. In the corner at the top of the hill, at the South Pony, is yeah. incredibly hard to, like, keep position through. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's just during that whole week. 
like a lot of times like, a once rider, like, I get through Blue Dome, I look forward to hills so much. I've had a lot of fun racing it last a year. Little more um, I had the flu right before, like some really sick. I got really sick well after well flying to Winston well Salem, so I took like two weeks um, off the bike going into Tulsa, and I started riding like the week before. And I was just kind of hoping for the best. I really didn't want to race Tulsa because I knew I wasn't good enough, and I had a lot of goals going into it. But I kind of went there trying to get fitness again. So I was really looking forward to it for 2020, but I guess I'll have to wait until next year. Yeah. Yeah, Tulsa and Athens are two of like my favorite courses. Because yeah, they're a lot of fun. So, what's your favorite kit out of the G1 teams? Definitely ours. Abby Youngworth, one of my teammates, designed this jacket kit, and it looks awesome. It's so, it's actually a really awesome design. I love the navy blue. It's really nice. But yeah, definitely our kit is the best. Jack Roo. Yeah. She do it and I was like sure go ahead sent me some, and I was like, I was kind of nervous because I, I'm very traditional she's like if you're willing to step outside yeah. the box just a little bit and it was amazing like she she kept sending me modifications and I was just like it get, it keeps getting better and better so I was super stoked about that um Frankie said you crashed in speed week think Walter Boro how did that happen Dash, but really, oh, they yes, I did. I crashed in Walter Walt Um Vita I was actually leading Speed Week at this well point, racing. and uh, we were working for me. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I, I crashed I mean, with two laps to go. Um, I, someone hooked my bars from the, the inside, and I knew I should have been chance. protecting my inside, but my bars were... Uh, Someone kind of really hooked cool, me from the bro. inside, and so my wheel went sideways, and I thought that I saved it, but my tire had rolled in the meantime, the and, and I was thrown was off the bike, and uh, the, the side of my hip was gone. Uh, but I tried to finish the race, and since a, I wasn't a, on my bike, they didn't give me a finishing position, so technically I DNF'd Walterboro. Um, so I lost Speed Week that day, and I was super frustrated, and I was kind of sad. But, um, yeah, Free it was just kind of like, it was something that happens, and uh, just the way that the hook happened from the inside, it, over it rolled my tire. Yeah, Kara was like, that was a fun race. Except for me, you crashed. Yeah. Walter Burrow was, was pretty crazy. I mean, the backside was so narrow, and it was fenced, it was fenced on both sides, so it was like, you... You can't veer very far off the path. <laughs> um, so there are actually three season-long jersey competitions. We've got the Young Rider, the Lap Leader, and the Colorado Leader. So um, one of the things that I've always like, uh, so Abby finished third last year with the Young Leader, uh, Young Rider. So um, what what are your thoughts on those three different competitions, and uh, what do you think it takes to to win one of those? Definitely just consistency. Um, you know, finishing at the top ten of a race. You know, each time and just consistency over all the races, and you know, trying to keep progressing each race and uh, being there in the finish, and just figuring out as a team, even because you know, there's three different categories. And, we got a rider we're um, about from Mexico City. I mean, if your Garcia goal is, I think you have to make somewhat of a goal of what you want. If it's a young rider, you know, you have to Franco kind of be there to work for your young middle. riders. And kind of yeah. what is it that your team has? I mean, our team has some young riders, and some people may have an entire U25 um, team where they can, that's what they can go for. Or um, just having, like, just figuring out what's the best for your roster um, and what you can aim for throughout the year. And for sure, like, at the first race like you know who has that jersey has a big advantage i know like um what was it lily williams and starla kept those jerseys throughout the year like they didn't change very much um so definitely just like Lily you know, was up in get... front at, at El Paso for like 87,000 laps. Yeah, so she, she definitely racked up um, those lap points. <laughs> yeah so Another good question, um, which one do you like to race more, crit or road? 
a little bit less than what it was um, this afternoon. I like them both for different reasons. And I was talking to Kelly down. about this down last down. night. Crits have always here. been Kimberly something Lucci that watch out for it was Beal easier for me to figure out. It was, um, it didn't come easy, but definitely like crits are something that I feel that I can do well at in stage racing or road racing is super challenging to me. And I have weaknesses during road races and throughout the years I've been trying to figure out, you know, how can I handle stage racing? How can I get through a stage race? Like just things and as stage ra stage racing goes on, like you have more things to work on. Like in a crit, I feel like you work on sprinting and that's what you, that's what you try to do good at in a crit. It usually comes down to a sprint. So you have to have a good sprint. But with road racing, it's, you have to be able to climb, you have to be able to do long distance, you have to be able to time trial. And if you get through all those things, you can sprint. So it's definitely like crit racing is really fun for me. It's somewhere, and it's something that I can do and have a good time and not put too much pressure on myself. But when I go to a stage here, race, it's definitely challenging for me. And, and yeah, it's I mean, just something that I've been able to work on throughout the years. And, yeah, I, no I like dirt racing. I like road racing, it's but I definitely like them for different things. So I can't say that I like one more than the other. They're definitely challenging in their own ways. Yeah, you just like to race your bike. Yeah. I like to race. I think we'll be ringing the bell yeah, that Frankie had a good it. question. He Boys said, in numbers. Athens with a high speed, do you look for breaks or do you try to sit in and use your speed for the sprint? Because I, I, I've i noticed you do it both ways. Um, just from, <laughs> but, you know, from my, my side on the pit. And I, I like I will say, if, you know, the past years, if Wolfpack wasn't in the break, I, I will honestly say Dustin can vouch for me. I would cheer for you to win because I was always super Because, you know, hometown girl, I, I was always very excited to see your career grow and flourish. Um, but yeah, so what, what did you do? Like, were you looking for the breaks and you wanted to be in the break? I can sit here, I'm going to wait, be patient and go for the sprint. To make um, to I mean, line. honestly, like, thank you for what you said, that was so kind. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I'm a right racer who, if there's, there's a break, the I try to be in the break. If it's a sprint, I'm going to position myself in the sprint. I try to follow most moves. It's if, if it's in front of me, I'm going to go for the break. If there's someone, I know I followed Katie Klaus a couple times in this race because I know she's strong, and I know that, you know, um, she's just someone that I could probably work with and stay off the front with. Um, so definitely I follow, I try and follow James, like we, some moves that I feel that are important and it's just easier to uh, B, follow that move and sit on it. And I wasn't going through for most so of the moves. I mean, maybe I was, I don't man. know. But some of the, most of the moves I would follow and sit on and try and kill it because it's probably not going to stay away. It's like, especially on the back side. I'm pretty sure it was like a, a tailwind on the back side. So I was just trying to sit on it. And then, well, maybe it was a tailwind. <laughs> but yeah, I during this race, I tried to sit in and follow moves. But once it got to the end, I figured nothing's going to really go away in the last few laps. And I tried to stay at the front anyway. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. I didn't know it was because of it right then. No question. Yeah. Um, yeah, cool. For those who are watching, but you my can family, see right now, we have no idea what that means. Like when you when you say kill a move, you like know, to, what does that mean? Like if you see a break happen and you're like, those people aren't going to be, race. you know, they're they, they're not going to be finishers. Like what does that mean to kill a move? Um, it's basically like, so if a move's going and like, you don't think it's going to stay away, typically you just get on the wheel and you don't pull through and you sit up and usually that person, even if they keep going all out, it's, you know, they're pulling the field around at that point, which is not, it's not, it's not beneficial to you or your team to really just sit there and pull around the field on the front. So usually when we kill a move, it's, you follow it, you sit on it and you sit up and they usually, uh, uh, just goes back know, I'm not into gonna it's gonna be so you, you, to you have to be very aware of the people that you're racing against from what you're saying like you you look at the roster you see you know who's registered and you're like okay these are the people that I need to pay attention to you do what I do which is I look at the bike reg and I'm like I'm like who you know what do they have is the race predictor <laughs> you're like yeah. who's predicted um so yeah it, it sounds like you're you're very aware of who's in the race and who the the, the key players are um somebody said asked um did you win tbc 2019 overall serious yep 
Who won it? I did not oh, win Tyrion. Tucson by So Classic Dark overall. I did win the last I stage. I was actually coming off of an injury well, when I raced Tucson. Um, so the week, two weeks beforehand, so I, to I took two up, weeks completely uh, off the bike before well, Tucson by So Classic. I was dealing with a knee injury when I got back from racing in Australia. So Tucson by So Classic was just trying to get my fitness back before Redlands and try to crunch train real quick and get in shape. And yeah, so I ended up winning the last stage, but. Uh, yeah, I rode the TT completely wrong, and I paid for it, but that's okay. It was it well, was, was for me to get in shape, and the last day went well. We so see, yeah, I don't know if you have and the time trial, the stage a race is super important. Like, like if you kill the time oh, yeah. trial, you can kind of sit and chill out, um, because stage races are time based, correct? Yes, and so definitely Tucson, like that TT, it was a pretty short time trial, but it kind of changed the GC, and then the next day was a pretty long road race, and Hoggins Berman had a big team, I believe that was thirty riders. Showwear, oh, yeah. um, showwear and hunting. So, right now, I mean, I was racing by myself, so it was just kind of like, so you know, do what I can to, uh, you know, figure something out in the race and do the best that I can do. Right now, yeah, that's tough. Um, um, so what kind of crit course? course? This is from Leg Day Where, Cycling. What kind of crit course do you prefer? Oh, uh, technical or less that. technical? Flat or climbing? Me, and which do you like least? Which is a good question. Over the crest, hmm. yes. all of them. The for me, yeah, I honestly, I, really, I, so this is I like lap. all of them. Uh, and like, you like know, like there's some days that like I think that won't be good for me. Like Crybaby Hill, I never thought it was good for me, but I always seem to do well there. And like, I think because it's so challenging, it just like all crit courses are pretty exciting for their own thing. They all bring something different. You know, some courses. Is, oh, you know, will come down in a breakaway, or there's a chance no, more like a bigger chance of a breakaway. Um, and, um, so it's sprint. definitely exciting. I mean, I don't say that I like any of them it's like really less than others, but there are some days yeah. that We're no matter how many really times well, we do the course, I can't figure it out. Party. Like Winston Salem is uh, one of those that no matter how many times I've raced it, the course is so awkward. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like interesting. Just some courses, you know, it's really hard to figure out like one colobi, where you go hard and you know yeah it's one winston salem is one, one of those courses that kind of make it's sure really hard to figure out is represented in that breakaway um frankie not, asked uh what is your go-to food for celebrating and then uh what you enjoy the most um my well he's under 21 so it does not involve alcohol Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Plus, when you're at. Oh, yeah, true. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I would say, like, cookies during dirt racing is, like, my favorite food. Like, when I come back, I just smash, smash a couple cookies. And Erica would always buy me these little cookies with, like, these sprinkles on them. Just plain old sugar cookies. They're so good. When you finish, like, a crate, you're like, oh, I just want a big old cookie. <laughs> oh, oh, my sister gave yeah. us a heart. So give a shout-out to Christy Hill. She's, like, been a supporter of Wolf since we were athlete architecture um, oh hi they thanks for watching um for the hope you're having a good time james eden asked nutrition during crit here, this is a very good question so do you do gels mix in the bottle or nothing that's for safety um, so I always drink a Red Bull before crits because it gets me like super amped up and just like my heart racing and you know, it's probably not healthy or like whatever. It's probably not the best for my heart in like 15 years, but um, yeah, so I always actually drink a Red Bull before the start and um, I honestly don't think I usually eat anything during the race like a gel. Sometimes I'll have a gel in you know like a caffeine gel like halfway through or 10 laps to go or whatever it is but um yeah usually just a red bull at the beginning is good for me oh so here a break is is trying to go uh it's just a single rider so usually when single riders go it's, it's hard for a single rider to stay away usually you want to bring someone with you um, but we'll have to see once the camera angle changes if she's still um so somebody said your racing age is 21 so that's what really matters right and i disagree um because it's, it's the only thing that matters <laughs> <laughs> no. 
is like putting out the vibe she, she pick uh, and um oh my gosh delivery. there's and so many people I like christina gookie smith those people nice they're in their 40s minutes. and they're still like uh, absolutely killing it like i would win. never I'm myself when i was actually racing would never want to toe the line against those people because they're they're badass regardless of your age that's one one beautiful thing about cycling is that you can race and be competitive and successful um as a woman until like you're in your 50s that's in my opinion i like what do you think about that um i think he was talking about drinking but oh Move up no, but it's this deeper really than it really needs to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but I definitely think it's pretty interesting. Um, just the girls at the top level of the sport who are older and like doing really well. So, I mean, I think it's one of those things like women, as you get older, the better you get. I mean, you know, there's a lot of, you know, 30, 40 year old women who are like killing it. Like, for sure. But yeah, 21 is the only thing that matters. <laughs> Racing age. Sorry. Slow. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's like, you're okay, Chris, you're dumb. If you're Chris <laughs> Carlson, you can do that at 60. Not That's true. Chris Carlson will do anything. He will be drinking Red Bulls and kicking up the race until he's so <laughs> too old. Unless you're actually like uh, what percentage of ra there, crit racing is skill versus power? Hmm. Right. I think it's, you know, it, you have to have both. Yeah, I think that's a good I question. Expect, uh, an I mean, you have to have skills. You attack. have to be able to ride in the pack. You have to be able to fight for position. You could barely get um, by. You have to hold position, yeah. but you also Perhaps have to be really to strong to be there. So, yes, a good. Oh, right here I go. I'm trying to get away. Or or maybe it was a cream. At what point during the race do you start like getting kind of antsy and and a little nervous about what's going to happen because like right here we're at 18 laps to go um but yeah at what there you are you're sitting six but uh, at what point are you ready to to see how things shake down it is really important um i mean the whole time definitely like the last 10 laps i'm like getting pretty nervous and you know figuring out where i need to be making sure i don't lose position uh i mean they, like the whole race i'm always running for position and trying making sure that i'm staying on a good wheel someone that i trust in front of me uh, 30 to 40 riders each looking around for who's around me. Um, I really like to look around for who's around, looking behind me, looking who's been following me the during the race. And, One thing that's um, really telling about this bike race Yeah, is so Tina kind of the whole race, I'm I'm always wheel. on edge, but Tina definitely the last 10 laps, you can't lose. Like, here I am, I'm trying she to move up. I'm talking in the radio, but I was... Yeah, because you can see Erica, like, looked behind her. Like, she was looking... Yeah, like, right there. She's looking to see where you are. Yeah, and... Remember that she cried. Usually, like the last, no, we no, try and I stay mean, together and talk to each other ago. and see how we're doing. Cry, and I, like, and she had crashed during this part, race, and I didn't really get a chance to see her. So sometime no during the race, I was like, "Hey, how are you? Like, hopefully you're doing." I think we were chatting right here, yeah, checking in with each other, seeing who's feeling better. Like, if Erica was like, "Hey, Summer, like I feel really good today. Like I think I'm gonna win the sprint." I would leave Erica out in heartbeat. Like, it's just who's feeling better, and like, you know, what day is it? And there are days that you know I don't i even feel like riding my bike and so at the end you know she's feeling awesome like definitely she's a great teammate and she is really good at helping me with positioning and being where i need to be so like she um definitely just gave me or she makes it easier for me if she's told where i need to be definitely well i mean you're kind of learning from one of the best <laughs> yeah the for sure I'm really you know national champion like you had such a great mentor you, like your, your mom team said team erica and summer equals call great call team like you guys yeah, were such a solid team of just two they they um and most most of these people d1 racers their teams have you can have a max roster of six per Get crit race and you guys had two kind of suitcase, and yeah, were yeah, able to pull off something pretty incredible bucks, yeah and it's erica way, and i we weren't at the, the time i was racing on rally and we weren't a d1 team um and at, at this time we were just you trying to figure out races we could go to and have fun and just have race days we weren't being raced a lot by the team so 
um, like a couple after Sunny King, she had texted me and she was like, hey, you should come out to Speed Week. But I was at I was at the rally team camp. And I was like, oh, well, I don't know. Like, I don't want to, like, rub the team the wrong way by leaving team camp to go race. And she was like, please, like, I'm begging you, like, please come, please come. So, like, three days before Speed Week, I book my flight to Georgia and I leave straight from team camp. And I go race Speed Week. And you just never know what's going to happen. Like, we went there to race. We went there to have a good time to get race days. And it ended up being, like, one of the best weeks I've ever had, you know, racing and just um, and, and having and, a lot of fun and, and something like Athens, I probably would have never thought that I was like going to win Athens, well, but like you just never know what's going to really happen during the race. And, so you know, you can't like say no. <laughs> right. And, and um, you know, Erica really talked me into Redman, coming to Athens oh, after Rebecca Sunday. Wasik and, has moved up and um, gold and yeah, so, I mean, you just never know what's going to happen. It's just part of it. Yeah, I mean, that's yesterday. Definitely. Yeah. So Harrow says you and Erica have have great race chemistry. Did that happen immediately, or did you learn from each other over time? Like, how does how does that happen? Is it kind of just it, it happens or doesn't, or how how does that work? Definitely, um, Erica and I's chemistry just happened pretty instantly. Uh, she's someone who's just very, you know, gracious, and she gives back really well, and she's just a great mentor. And um, I actually went and raced for her um, at Tulsa the year before, so that was my first time really doing Tulsa. And she, you know, asked me if I would come there, and you know, I was going to help her. And she, you know, I just wanted to race, and I wanted to race with her, and I wanted to learn from her. Um, so I actually worked for her at Tulsa, and but the really second really night at Blue Dome, she ended up crashing and breaking her rib. But oh, yeah. just from like the You're first time that I ever worked with her, it was just there was something about us that we could look at each other, and I can see what she's doing in the race, and she can do what I was doing. Um, I guess I don't know what creates good chemistry. It's just that her racing style and her mentorship off the bike was phenomenal, and for me, it made me really comfortable. And she believed in me with everything her and jamie just gave me like jamie told me like before the race her her him and erica would just be like summer you're gonna be second wheel out of the corner like i don't care you're gonna be second wheel you have to be second wheel i don't give a shit what you want to do you're gonna be second wheel <laughs> so i mean i knew exactly where i needed to be in a race and um i would do it just because i knew that they believed in me so much and they helped me with everything and all i had to do was be second wheel out of the last corner so <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, I race chemistry is with Erica was so easy. It just on and off the bike. She's the just like a mom. Um, now the so it just down, so it they, just happened, I'm and I'm super grateful uh, for her. Um, getting to learn under her for like so two years and having, having her just kind of me under her wing is something uh, that I really really enjoyed about our friendship. And so they were good friends and means a lot to me. So something about Athens Twilight that people that are watching it might not understand is that like the the light changes throughout the race like you start and you know it's like seven o'clock at night or whatever and then you know the sun sets and so how does that impact the race when you, you're going into it and you're finishing in the dark as opposed to you know starting in the light what yeah, that's a good question because like sometimes you're you know you're getting dressed and it's light out and you put your sunglasses on and you have like the dark lenses and like right before the start you're like on the mic like hey can you bring me my clear lenses like you forget that it's you know going to be dark by the time you end but it's definitely something interesting you have to get used to it because at first you know it's really bright and the sun's in your eyes and kind of squinting during the race and then once the sun goes down and it's pretty dark there's shadows because mm -hmm. there are lights coming onto the course and so you just start seeing things and they're just shadows but like next to you it looks like there's a bike like right next to you and you can see your shadow and it's just like constant movement around you so you have to be pretty careful in those last few laps when you start seeing shadows because it just kind of it's, it's a weird it's weird it's hard to explain what it's like it just seems like things are coming at you from all angles yeah for sure definitely wearing the right lens is great uh, so you can see sam right there making sure that you know 
when they do open you up, have she the right doesn't ones on freak and out. She doesn't that feel any the race gonna be dark. So to you don't want your good ones to be dark. Saving her pennies for that. Film. Yeah, having those photochromic lenses are kind of important because, like, they adjust to the light. Oh yeah. Frankie. Frankie said he asked, like, in the last laps, is fighting for position natural for you, or do you get nervous with the fighting? And then leg day cycling also piggybacked off that. It's like, how much contact are you comfortable with, really? Like, how much is okay? And then when are you like, this is not safe? Um, I mean, definitely in the end, like, fighting for wheels is just natural. I mean, it's just something you do. I One thing I really try to do in those last few laps is protect my inside. I always try and stay to the inside. So if a crash happens, I'll be able to have a clean line around it or so people can't take my inside. So sometimes I try to shut that gap off on the inside so if someone's dive bombing the corner, they won't come next to me and take my spot. So I really try to shut the door from the inside. Um, and also, you know, during a race, like, it's pretty normal to have, you know, rubbing up shoulders. But if, as long as it's not purpose, you know, if someone's purposely trying to, um, you know, call something by, you know, getting too close or, you know, causing accidents by... You know, swerving or headbutting or anything like that. Obviously, that's not you know how how you want to race. Um, but I mean, there are times that the group comes together and it, it's not purposeful. Like people accidentally, you know, like you rub shoulders and. But definitely, like it's not cool to you know you know send it up the inside and cause the ripple effects that sometimes causes crashes. It's just. And so Definitely it not cool to do that, to but point, there is some rubbing and is rubbing bracing. While watching, you know, this this right replay is that right like every over, time we come through, there's a, a lap counter and also the list of the top. 10 riders who come through the line first um and you're there like every time your name is up there like third maybe fourth sixth whatever but you're always present um so that's something that i think you know a lot of racers think that they can kind of like hang out in the back and then like make their way back up to the front for the finish of the race like what's your thought on that it, it seems pretty apparent that you think you need to be there in order to watch the race happen and if something gets away like um milligan racing is is trying to create a break or you know trying to get away how important is it in the last 10 laps to be in that position yeah i mean being at the front of the race i always like to stay in the i like to stay at the front of the race so i can see what's going on i can see who's trying to go off the front if it's if it's someone that we need to follow if it's something that we need to be on like i definitely like being able to see what's going up the road because it's just like if someone that i know it has a really good chance like i think Sarah Lechuga was attacking now and she's someone who's very strong and she is not necessarily a crit racer but she's just a strong racer in general or it's like she gets away she She's someone who's Lily very Wade, powerful and can stay Jammer. away. Um, so definitely like, just being able to see and who's so going and being able to follow it. Like here is Erica bringing that, that duo USA back and um, just like seeing, really being able to see what's happening in the race really and being able to engage in that is like super important for me. I like to be at the front. I mean, there are people who like to serve the back and come to the front at the end of the race, but like it's strung out right now and it's so much harder to work at the back because you're constantly closing those gaps and, if you're there, just if you stay in the top 10, it's a lot easier to float the top 10. And, um, you stay in that position, and it's just a lot easier throughout the race, so you don't have to close gaps, and there's people falling off the back, and you don't want to get caught behind someone falling off the back and having to close that gap. Um, and some people aren't comfortable in the field that they like to sit at the back and come to the front at the end of the race. It's just that I think that they've done so much more work at the end once, you know, once the end comes. Yeah, um, James Eaton actually had two linked questions. He said, what's your favorite track event? So getting completely out of crit racing um, and which track event best trained you for crit racing? Kind of with uh, hmm. team, obviously. Yeah, so it's really interesting because like, <laughs> yeah. You know, um, I mean, when I I grew up racing track and I did everything. So back uh, then the Van Omnium was uh, you had the like, 200 meter time trial, the 500 meter time trial, the two um, the 2K and scratch and points race. Like, that was the Omnium. And, then and um, so basically, I grew up racing everything and. 
the person year, that I always get started. Were, every year I focused on breaking the national records at the time and so I think that that made me naturally um, well, a good sprinter because I was always trying to break the 200 meter record and the 500 and that's really right now, about having a good sprint. And so I think that those too, really so set me up for DNA just DNA naturally having a good sprint throughout and all the years. It's something we worked on like all the time, all like every day at the track, we worked on our sprint, we worked on our sprint. So um, yeah, I mean, definitely that. And also I raced everything. So points race, scratch race. I think it all kind of helped with leg speed growing up and, and you can see um, it yeah, just in the, endurance in that I have now the and Peloton, definitely the working on my 200 and 500 miles like when I was young dance. helped me They're have a better sprint to now. Take short, fast so miles. as we go into the final yeah, eight laps, um, Frankie had a so really great rider. question. He said, is there anyone super aggressive that you know you have to watch out for? And there's somebody that I have in mind in particular who is – probably one of the scrappiest racers that I know but um in your opinion who who is somebody that you're like they're so aggressive they're always going to be there at the finish um who do you look out for and she's being chased down by fearless femme I know Rachel Langdon's always yes, on who, that's who I'm yeah. Say. <laughs> yeah, Rachel Langdon's always there at the finish, and she is one who could slip away, and like she's super strong, and so she's a good person to have in a breakaway as well. And she has a pretty good sprint on her, so like if she's in the move, um, yeah, I mean usually she's always doing stuff in the race. Like she's someone I always feel like I'm covering or. You know, I'm always next to Rachel like that. <laughs> but um, yeah, she's strong. Sure, like she, yeah, she's strong and she's savvy and, and definitely like she's someone I I would definitely watch. And um, there are particular few races like that who um, are always trying to break away, and you're just you know you're you're always following them. And I know a few of her teammates um, from Fast Chance during Speed Week were the same way. And yeah, I can't remember exactly who it is now, but. I remember just having to watch the their whole team throughout the Speed Week series. Once like, oh, no, some of the other teams only came in for here. Athens, so just what we had to watch their team throughout the whole series because the they were constantly Grace. throwing down attacks for us. <laughs> Super strong. I mean, there she is off the front right there. Yeah. yeah. Look at that, eight seconds though. Biggest gap we've seen so far. I remember Another seeing her, it was, I think it was after one. Gateway Cup. Like she was cracked. And that and girl had like given everything she had. As, uh, she finished that race and she was just course. done. And yeah. um, Kelly Samuelson and I were both like pouring water on her, trying to get her to like not die. Um, I don't know that I would but be, uh, let's see. This disarmed with only six laps to go. I think that's Scotty and yeah, I mean, Hoggins Berman is also, I mean, they were always right there on the front, like pretty much controlling the races. Yeah, they were always one that was, you always have to watch. This team is known for is when I was born, I talked about seeing her name a lot yesterday in Spartanburg, so she had good. Yeah, and um, USA Crits actually said fast chance riders now race for Rider Box, and they're also, they're a D1 team this year when we race. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's <laughs> make that happen. Yeah, I know. Right? The curve. That's awesome. But you see the the racers. Yeah. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to ask them it. now. They We're closing say, in okay, on like the no last five no laps, so it gets super we can't exciting. Let you be up there by yeah. Anymore. It's time to finish this bike race. So the attacks are on, the chase is on. I'm done with crashes. Final laps here in Athens. Are you telling Erica what to do? Or is Erica telling you where you see her to go? Buried, like what to do and where to go? The, yeah, so like range. usually, she, usually in like the last five laps, we're trying to find each other. Last five or three laps. So at this point, laps, we're probably no trying to find each other, get together, and sync up. And um, I know I remember so uh, right at the front. Usually they come the back. Uh, we don't. We weren't really worried about solos right going off the front the because it's hard to. Usually in any crit, it's hard to stay away solo. Some courses are better for solo riders. But yeah, usually during this the last five laps. Last, last five to three laps, we're we're talking on the, the mic for sure. And I remember coming into the last lap of this race, and I was just was screaming at Erica on the top of my lungs, like up, up, like make sure you stay on top of it. And she had changed to her spare bike um, after her crash, and she was having shifting issues. And so every time she would go hard, it would 
drop into the small chain ring. Um, so actually during our lead out on the final lap going into the final corner, her chain dropped and like she wasn't, she hadn't actually finished her lead out. She was supposed to sprint up the straightaway for me. Uh, but in the moment I, I couldn't scrub speed, scrub speed to wait for her. So I just went from the corner and that's, off of instinct, of it felt like it was better for me to just go the, yeah, go long and that's what I had to do. But when her right, chin dropped, like, she was like, ah, oh, and I was just like, okay, I have to go. Like, I can't wait for her to get, like, go into the chain ring and go. So I just kind of went from the last corner. But, um, yeah, so she was having some mechanicals. And so she was kind of talking to me during the race saying, like, hey, my my chain keeps dropping and I have to be careful on the back straight. So here she is. She's on the front. And I remember having to kind of make my way. You can see me moving up, but <laughs> on the outside. But again, a lot of these other riders. Yeah, so she really wanted me to find her wheel, and so we tried to make it to the front and then try and slot in. Sometimes we get stuck on the front, you know, earlier than we want to. Uh, but yeah, so I remember during this time we were just chatting and um, getting on each other's wheel, and we were using the mics every now and then. Be like, are you here? And typically when I'm on her wheel, I'm like, okay, Erica, I'm here, I'm here. Um, so yeah, and then once once we're getting into those final, like, the last kilometer, I'm just yeah, yelling at her all out what I need, bars. left, right, um, close the inside. And, um, if and someone is on my inside um, and we're going into a corner, I, I try to um, but you know, close the door a little like bit. So if someone doesn't yeah. sit at my inside, to try to protect my inside early, always. Especially uh, so yeah, if once we find each other, just really communicating deal. just to each other um, by yelling. <laughs> Well, you talked about so a couple of good questions. Um, from where to go? James right Eaton, do front, certain riders or teams get more respect or room than others in the peloton as it gets closer to the end? Exactly what it, is thinking about how certain lead out trains and men's races are given a little bit more space. And in, in my particular opinion, I would say no. Um, I would think that those people are, are more ones that we watch and try to prevent from happening. What's your opinion on that? Yeah, I mean, me, definitely Erica for Carty, sure, like, right in the end, like, the teams are trying to move up, teammates, and certain teams, like, I know no personally, like, I try to follow it's some teams if I see them making, uh, but really, at the end, yeah, like, if you're, know, if you can create, like, a lead-out train, sometimes it's pretty, it's sometimes really hard to create a perfect lead-out train, and typically you're always fighting for position with other teams and whatnot, that it becomes pretty hard, like, it's kind of every individual at the end, like, and sometimes you have one lead out or you have a whole team trying to do it but i wouldn't say you give one team more room than the other especially the riders you're looking out for you're you're not going to give them more room right typically if it's someone that you're like looking for the end like if you want them on like your wheel like for me like if someone's on my wheel i'm like okay well you're not getting in front of me like you're not getting the wheel that i'm on if it's like if i'm like with something like erica like the if someone tries to take my wheel, I will say something John, because it's my teammates' my wheel. The they try to the fight me for it. I just try and keep yeah, my handlebars in front of theirs because you know, it's my wheel. Like, she's giving me a lead out. But, Garcia, yeah, for sure, it's just... I would say some people you give less room to if you're, you know, if it's coming down to a threat. Dustin had a very good question. He's like, um, as we lose more and more races, what do y'all miss more? The excitement of the race or Frankie's incredible commentary? Hmm, both. I know. Because it can't happen without the other. He's pretty great. He's pretty great. Yeah. Jacob Austin's like, Frankie's Frankie's commentary is pristine. Um, and my brother. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Coming up right now with three laps to go. Oh, your brother, he's, he's got good sense. Um, so as we're going into the final three laps, what's going through your mind? Um, in those last three laps, like, is there anything like, do you get like super anxious or, you know, are you just super hyper focused going through turn number one going oh, into turn number um, two i get now it's pretty nervous um, near the end of the race Rebecca Wasik again in the back. <laughs> yeah i didn't work I, I start getting I'm antsy front, and just like um just have to keep myself wheel. pretty patient because i like, like to go Natalie early and it's just like natural instinct because you get really antsy and you're like waiting for the end and so really just kind of stay focused on like what you're trying to do like if you go too early like you can actually ruin your 
race by going too early and like not timing it perfectly. But yeah, really just focusing on like they when you can go other, so um, and focusing on your position rally, helps you know, get I mean, through those last few laps. Uh, I don't yeah. see Julie Caliza up there. Um, um, Daniela Garcia, the world of Jorge, he said, I know it's a different discipline, but you mentioned you raced track before. Would you, any, would you ever race any, would you ever race any fixed gear crit races like mission crit? Ooh. Oh, they're going to be no way. That stuff looks so control. scary. I mean, I think it would be fun, but I went and watched LA one in, in Long Beach, I guess, probably a few years ago, and I have never seen something so insanely terrifying. Yeah, I honestly, I know there are some bigger ones, bigger ones like Red Hook and that maybe aren't as crazy, but yeah, it definitely looks, it looks wild. I don't know if I'm that, if I'm that out there. I think I'm behind because USA Crits just posted that this is the last lap. And if you look, I mean, you've got Erica and then right behind, there's, you're right there. Oh yeah, so Erica is is now but where moving is up Sam Schneider? That she's is moving me up and we're here, trying to get to the front <laughs> and holding top. position here at the Athens Twilight Criterium we talked about Peter Mullins winning yeah, in 2017 DNA drilling Schneider, it trying to double up they're, I mean they're pretty Sam much setting you guys up for really good. Yeah, the perfect lead out position, you know yeah and race. DNA was super Erica competitive Curry during this race and Erica a lot of breaks leading it out in the last quarter so yeah Look at they have Lance such a good squad. This the is the last is corner, on. and this is where Erica, Erica's chain drops. Right over the and I'm like, shoot, to I got to go. What went through your mind when you knew you had it? Is the um, so like during the straightaway, like I kept kind of waiting for someone when I went, I knew it was pretty far out, but I was just kind of waiting for someone to come up my hip and I never saw any, anyone coming. Um, and I try to look behind my arm on both sides to see like if someone's coming and I never saw anyone, but I just, I kept trying to get faster and faster and faster because Sam had beat me the night before. So I was kind of waiting for something to come and then like it didn't, nothing came. And so I just tried to keep, keep going harder, keep going harder. And typically I just stare at the finish line and I, I never sit up before the finish line. So typically I don't get my, my double hand. Uh, no, up. I did that once. Yeah. Yeah. Never, uh, yeah. No. So I, I actually that never stop until I actually cross the finish line. Again. And so that's one thing that's, it's been, it's been good, but yeah, that's, yeah. I just try and go all the way to the finish line. Congratulations, Summer. Oh, this yeah. was like the best lap of my life. <laughs> <laughs> the lap after the race. <laughs> now, what wattage were you holding during that sprint? You know? Um, usually all like a thousand, eleven hundred is what I hit during a sprint. But yeah, I think during that sprint, it was pretty funny because really, really when I went, I kind of hesitated because yeah, Erica's chain had dropped and I was like, oh, and then so the I, I remember my power file was like, like high and, and then a little win, higher. That's awesome. Yeah. So usually like eleven hundred in sprint. Really early. So good job. I mean, yeah, you don't look back. There's no hesitation. And it's it's oh, incredible results, right? yeah absolutely yeah. amazing yeah. that that finish was yeah. so yeah. freaking solid and like erica totally yeah. celebrates you yeah winning because it, it's not a, a singular it's not a singular win like it's a team win when yeah anybody wins it doesn't matter it's it's getting that that jersey on the podium yeah and it was pretty exciting because i mean she's raced athens you know like every year for like the last 20 years you know 15 years and like it's always such a big race it's something that everyone like wants to win because it's just like a big party afterwards and um i remember when she when we finished she came up to me and she was like you just won athens you won athens and i was just like oh my gosh did i actually just win that and um a lot of my teammates on rally like john murphy and ty magner were like these big time you know crit racers on hincafe and uhc and they like sent me messages and they 
they were like, you won Athens. Like, that's such a big win. And like, you know, it's such an exciting race to win, you know, even for someone who's like won before, like John Murphy. And, um, yeah, so it's kind of funny to, you know, when you win something like that, you don't even realize like, it's like, oh my gosh, like so many people want to win this race. And it's just so exciting and awesome to like have that so this is what I want to do. Hey, Chief, can you bring it down just a little bit so we can hear Summer? Thank you very much. Just Here's what I want you to do, Summer. If you don't give up. Just exhale really loud for us. And that, I remember, after, I remember this. Like, Ladies and gentlemen, your 2019 like, Athens with the, the Pinnacle Women's Twilight so Criterium Champion. Just, like excitement in me and like, just like after last night that, and getting like, second, having a hard time won, finding like, Erica's wheel and not getting it. Did that drive you to the wind tonight? Just, like, oh yeah, I mean, sorry, not even a D1. I mean, no, it's amazing. Like you guys, they believe in me so much. Erica's been coaching me through this whole thing, and I'm just, I'm just so proud of us. Well, that, let's talk about real quick what, what happened. You saw your like, teammate. Yeah. Did you actually see team. Erica go down at yeah. the very beginning of the race? I didn't know Erica went down, but I looked I looked to the front oh, okay. of the race, and I didn't see Erica, and so I was on the mic making sure she was okay. And at the end, she was just going to give me everything anything. she got, and it was amazing. I was just screaming on top of my lungs, and I knew if we went into that final corner, one, mm -hmm. two, we were going to get it, and it was just beautiful. Look to your left. Look at your teammate. She's bloodied and battered, and yet she delivers you to the win. What's it mean for you to win the race tonight? It's freaking awesome, and she's just amazing. I don't know what I would do without her. Over the moon, Summer Moke of Rally UHC. Hey, by the way, that was freaking awesome. Congratulations. Thank you so much. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Summer Moke. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I think I like I'm I'm like 30 seconds behind. Oh, I love it. All right, we are now just about ready for the next portion of our entertainment for the night.